Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols. You know, in the last video, we had some really interesting discussions, and you guys had some really cool responses and thoughts about an intelligent civilization at our level expanding and colonizing and what that colonization would be like. You know, there's a lot of things that I found really surprising going through this process. Of course, in just a couple of moves, 10 cycles, when you send a von Neumann probe out and it starts building, let's say, at least two more probes to go out to other solar systems, the distance and the amount of probes and the rapidness that an advanced civilization would be able to spread across a galaxy is really incredible. And the thing that I found really interesting exploring this topic was that there would be a point of diminishing returns a lot faster than I thought. And when I say diminish, diminishing returns, I mean <clears throat> when a civilization like ours did here on Earth, we as humans expanded and colonized to different islands and land masses and we will certainly do the same in space if we're wise enough to get past our foibles and potential natural disasters but the thing that i found really interesting is <clears throat> that as this civilization grows and expands of course its intelligence its knowledge and its technical ability is going to be growing exponentially and that they would get to a point really rapidly, a lot quicker than I thought. They would get to a point where there would be diminished returns, meaning they would be learning less and less. And they may get to a point where they would stop. Because I don't think they need to colonize galaxies necessarily. <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to explore this topic and the von Neumann probes a little further. Although we've spoken about some of this stuff in the past, it's really interesting to ponder. Okay, so here we have a von Neumann probe, and by necessity, it would have to be able to travel to a solar system, <clears throat> land at an opportune location where it has the ability to, you know, check out the environment, and reproduce itself. And I would think a probe, the first von Neumann probe, would need a few things to help it in its mission. Because its mission isn't just to acquire land, it's to acquire knowledge, to observe and do all sorts of things. So that requires building a real infrastructure. <clears throat> they may even have things like this, where it's a type of craft that shoots out von Neumann probes. You know, maybe 50 or 100 is it. It, it could send out, perhaps. But regardless, each one would need some things. It would need some sort of fabrication units to help fabricate new things, perhaps from the atomic level up, like uh, we have spoken about in really earlier videos about this fabricator, how it could be constructed and how it would lay down, it would like lick, essentially, layers and layers of atoms at a time. So it, the von Neumann probe would need some fabricators, most likely. It would need um, some survey robots or survey craft to go around and acquire <clears throat> the materials needed for the probe to do its magic, to re not only rebuild itself, but most likely it would build like a factory first. So it would need a few of these probes. <clears throat> Let's say they would have a bunch of nanobots also to fix things and do a bunch of other important uh, repairs and other things that they might need to do. And then I would think they might <clears throat> also have some crucial stuff that's already prefabricated. Perhaps the ability at some point you know, it's a waste of time just to send these out and have them colonize and gather information data if they can't send that data and information back to the 
primary civilization. And I think it's possible they could, or the primary civilization could have a bunch of entangled particles, something like that, maybe. Entanglement is the best terms, I guess, we, we have for it now. And then have a few of those on this craft, so if it goes very far, it wouldn't, the primary civilization wouldn't have to wait 100,000, you know, light years worth of time to get the data back. Perhaps they could just do entanglement and instantly send the data back. But that would make those entangled particles, that communication system, very precious and irreplaceable, but a crucial aspect of the von Neumann probe. So we have the probe and it would be exploring and going to these different uh, solar systems. It would likely um, land in a good solar system where it could basically build at a good observation point. It would start building and doing the, it have different levels of protocols. But I think that uh, the probe would build things based on its observation of certain factors of interest within the solar system. For example, if they noticed a great potentiality for life, that would necessitate building a certain type of factory with you know certain types of you know equipment to observe more closely so one of the factors would be life certainly another level of, of importance would be technological life nuclear use spacefaring those would all have different protocols pre-programmed you would you could be certain so it would land on one of these locations <clears throat> It would start the little factory. And from there, the little factory will start uh, sending out its little craft. This first factory would be building all sorts of things. I like dome shapes because it's very structurally sound and the probes would go out and observe the different planets and learn things from the different locations you can be certain of that and as time passes their interest would just get greater and greater they would have certain priorities you can be sure these uh, dome-shaped probes or are, are, uh, factories, I guess, would be sending their little craft out, different types of craft for different types of missions, which could explain why we see a wide variance of different types of craft here. And one of the things I like to speculate is that, like the Nimitz incident, oh, wrong way, <laughs> um, smaller probes circular ones would deliver data and physical specimens and samples to the Tic Tac, possibly through that little L-shaped thing. And then the Tic Tac would go to a larger saucer, right? And then they would store this, the physical samples and specimens till it got to a point where essentially the uh, craft would be full, I guess you could say. <laughs> and they could go to locations <clears throat> on the bottom of the sea. Perhaps there's a, a shuttle craft that would bring it to a larger, much larger craft off planet. But of course, they would hide in the deepest, most difficult to access locations, especially if they're observing a technological civilization like ours. So the saucers might dock with this location and transfer the stuff over. And there would be different levels of this transference, I would think. I think they would have a lot of really interesting jobs to do once they're at this level, as if observing our planet. They would have a biological factory. 
Because when you really, really think about it, creating a biological robot or you know, occupants of a craft to go out and do this mission, it's so much more versatile than just a regular robot. And it's not unreasonable at all to presume an advanced civilization could create second generation life forms. And those little factories and places would probably be really freaking cool to explore. <clears throat> they might create a factory that's just specifically for more von Neumann probes. And would just keep spitting and sending those puppies out. So when you get to, I guess, like a civilization like ours, you start getting into some really interesting and kind of kind of important points, I, I think, to ponder. <clears throat> These craft would explore a civilization like ours and find points of interest, like nuclear. Nuclear is a very strong point of interest, you would think, for these craft and these advanced civilizations. I think that they would get to a point where they might just call a larger craft an emissary of the primary intelligence to come visit us. If the activity in our world or in the world they're exploring merited an actual visit by the primary intelligence. Which might be really cool. A super gigantic craft I think would be the sign of something really simultaneously ominous as well as exciting. At least that's what I think. And that craft would come and visit us, and depending on our activities, if we were hostile, they certainly could be very hostile very quickly. I don't think we should presume for a second that they don't have abilities that would frighten the, the poop out of us. <laughs> you know, I think we have to be very careful. I think it's so much wiser to try and communicate with these beings rather than attack them. So much wiser. Because I think these beings might have abilities that would, that could frighten the heck out of us. So far they've made a real point of being peaceful. And in the current era that we're in now, they are <clears throat> visiting almost every major military exercise. And even based on our hostile actions, like time and time again, there's incredibly reliable reports from the military of craft from Venezuela to Belgium <clears throat> to the US where they locked on missiles and these beings seemed to turn the other cheek. And there's many reliable reports of shoot downs like the 1974 Ramstein Air Force Base shoot down where the four biologicals were acquired that were dead. They had helmets on and little suits and their hands had craft integration like attachments in their fingers and they had ports in their bellies for some sort of aspect. I don't think we want to mess with them very much. I think one craft, a single little tic-tac, could likely take out every military on the planet. I think we could learn so much by communicating rather than being hostile and attacking. I think we need to make our choices very deliberatively. We certainly don't want a pissed off supergiant craft coming to Earth. Sorry about all the movement, gang. 
And I think we're at a real precious, <clears throat> precarious point right now on Earth with our finally public acknowledgement of the existence of these visitors. And in many ways, they're being treated as a threat. They're being posed as a threat to us. And, you know, silverback gorillas and grizzly bears are stronger than us. And we have learned by being wise not to attack, to respect them. And as I've said before, you can learn a lot from a broken watch. You can learn more from a complete whole watch. But you can learn a lot more by talking to the watchmakers. And there are people who know how to do this, make the communication. And we could learn so much. Anyways, what do you guys think? I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these aspects. Much love to you and yours. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Check your Wi-Fi network connection.